is a barrel aged uh, <clears throat> pilsner and then Ooh, a dry stout. We are live. Hello, hello. Just pulled it up. There we go. Hey, hey. Now, yeah, let's turn off turn off some volume. Want a little reverb on your... Uh... Meh, meh, meh. Yeah, I just get distracted by, like, listening to myself because it, it's a little bit slower. The voice of an angel, I, I stop. It's I'm like, oh, that's the same thing I'm saying for the second being... Oh, shoot, that's me. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome. Right. Welcome to the genus. Genus live stream. This is, you know, this is what's going on. Yeah. This is just our, this is our lives these days. This is, this is what we do. Why uh, only YouTube? Never, never heard of it. Is this a new site? Yeah, it's one of those ones uh, where it's like a social networking site. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, nah. they use it to steal all your information. Nah. And I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to take off. <laughs> it's uh, definitely not. Nah. I mean, you know, this thing will be dead in a couple of years. <laughs> uh, definitely not button. a viable technology. Yeah. No. That's the button. Hey, now All right. Are. Yeah, someone's on time. Woo! Yes. We yeah. are. This guy uh, is rude. <laughs> That was fun. Uh, Maple true. Valley, very nice. Well, yeah, everybody, let us know how we are sounding. Uh, we had to do a little bit of a different mic setup so that we don't have to have everybody have mics right in front of their faces. I think I did a pretty good job on the sound check, but we want your feedback as well, so let us know. Um, and yeah, that's pretty. That's uh, that's that's the the warm up into us beginning to talk about things, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool, so sound is good. Sounds great. Crispy. Mm, crispy All right. Boy. I got I got a good joke of the week for you. Prove it. Let's hear it. What do you call a bunch of uh, rabbits hock, uh, hopping backwards? A receding hairline. Uh, <laughs> very good. Uh, very uh, good. Golf uh, club. Golf yeah. club. Hundred percent. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Genus Brewing live stream. This is a live stream we do every single Sunday morning at eight forty-five Pacific Standard Time, in the morning a.m. over in Spokane. And uh, today we're joined with Yaya Brewing Company. Uh, yeah. Yaya is a brewery that's, I don't know, as the, as the crow flies, maybe uh, they can't three, see your hand. three yeah. miles that way? Two, that, way. Yeah. that way. That way. Uh, they're, they're pretty close by. They're one of our... Uh, an uh, Uncle Rico our, football throw. It yeah. is an Uncle Rico yeah. football Just throw. Over them it would land directly on their uh, front door yeah. mm. from here. Yeah. Perfectly. Uh, yeah, uh, so they're another Valley Brewery, and uh, um, what do you guys say? You, well, introduce yourself. What do you say you specialize in, or what do you? Uh, what's, what's your what's your pitch? Uh, well, I'm Chris. I'm the head brewer there uh, and co-owner with my brother Jason here. And uh, gosh, I don't know. What do we do well? Uh, we drink Any? very well. We, yeah, we're okay. We with drink that. significantly. That's a uh, that's a good skill to have, I think, in the industry. Yeah, QAQC. Um, I would say, in terms of beers, you're. I mean, probably oh, New, England New England IPAs, which Weird that you guys chose that. I know it's yeah. like a yeah. round. Uh, it's like I had some sort of foreshadow. Yeah, that's yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's solid planning. Uh, yeah, and we do a little bit of everything. Uh, yeah, I think we we specialize in our New England style IPAs, uh, but uh, you know we try to be a very well rounded brewery. Pilsner, uh, saison, sours, uh, sopranos on tap right now are. Uh, rotating sour and it's tasting real nice. Yeah, Raspberry this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun story, I was actually just at uh, Huckleberry's yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, and uh, there was a couple that was coming in and they saw your fluffy puffy on the on the shelves. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the girl that was in the couple just went off about how one of her friends has been trying to get a hold of that and so they bought like four four packs. <laughs> Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love to hear Thank that. Thank you, whoever you are. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, ah, I know, the, I know those angel. guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. uh, that fun. Well, let's go ahead and yeah. jump into some uh, some genus brewing and some yaya news. Uh, you guys have anything to pitch? Anything that's new out on tap and or events coming up or anything? Uh, well, uh, we got a, a raspberry sour we just put out this weekend. It's really good. Um, we just did our first Brett barrel pitch. Ooh, that's which fun. Which is slightly terrifying, but uh, <laughs> it's in it's in a warehouse across the road. So, it's delicious. So we should be good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as events and things. Uh, yeah. So we got our next canning run is June second. So we'll have a bunch or a few new cans out after June, uh, early June. Uh, we are planning with Precious Things uh, Fermentation Project. They're another Spokane brewery. Uh, a beer festival like Spokane has never seen. Uh, in fact, we were going to talk to you guys about it today. Yeah, cool. um, yeah. But uh, that's going to be held in early August. So just keep keep your ear to the ground if you guys are local or want to We'll make sure to post it. about it when we know about it too. Yeah. 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 Get everybody on board. Is that the one in the woods, the secrets? Yeah. 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 So the idea Maybe? is to like. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be really fun. We're going to drink beer in, uh, in the forest. Um, that yeah, sounds like a good time. And raise money for, for a nonprofit. And it'll be a lot less awkward when we're all naked. Yeah, um, well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's why we're in years. the forest. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we hit on this last week, but we put out a new hazy IPA that uses uh, Barber Rouge and uh, uh, African Experimental XJ. XJA2 slash something else that I don't remember. X-Men. Well, all right. I'm going to be honest on that. The XJA2, the only reason that sticks in my head is because of uh, um, the uh, Tesla guy and his son and whatever oh. stupid name he named him. Like, okay, <laughs> it, you were being original. I'll give you points for that. But, oh, man, if X dash A, like, whatever. XJA2. And, like... That, that, that's how I remember those hops. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we fermented it with some sundew. We're trying to really hit those red berry notes. Barber Rouge is really nice. Uh, I mean, strawberry floral for that. The XJAs were super cherry. It was almost mm. like Rainier cherry in there. Mm. Really nice, sweet. It was delicious. So that's a great IPA we got on tap. Yep. Uh, speaking of sours, we just brewed a new sour downtown. Uh, a new version of our... Awesome peach chew from uh, last Pichu. year, year That's before. A good one. That's yeah, a good everyone one. loved that one, so yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it's fun yeah. to kind of bring it back. Use a little mm. bit of hibiscus for coloring. Uh, you know, probably don't get much flavor off the hibiscus, oh, but no. it turns the color we, like peach. We got flavor. It was almost a decision not to put the peach flavoring in there because it tasted so good just having that hibiscus. A little bit. There's mm. that nice tannic and that that little bit of fruity quality that you get from you know maybe an agua fresca. Uh, Agua Fresca. It's, oh man, it's going to be delicious. Um, doing the most, another YouTube channel sent us a mead. Uh, so that's going to be open on a future Sunday live stream, hopefully with our resident local mead expert, uh, Tomas Crosscarry, um, owner of Emerus when that opens up. Uh, and Steel Barrel has a brunch on the 23rd. Brunch pop up. If you're in Spokane, uh, keep, your, keep your ear to the ground for a brunch pop up on the 23rd. Yeah. Um, that concludes our, you guys probably don't know the jingle. I probably didn't prep you for that at all. Oh, no, this no. will be fun. I'm there's excited. A, yeah, there's a, so Tim and I will kind of give you the warm up on it and then you guys got to jump in. Um, we're going to put you on the spot and make you feel a little awkward for a second here. But it's time for our beer of the week. Bum, 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 beer of the week. Yeah. 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 Well, the you guys last are super part excited about that? Literally That's just like, it's it's make a random easy. noise for it. Yeah. Make a guitar solo. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. So now everyone's got to jump and we got to do it all together. That way the audience feels like we're uh, all a team here. Um, so it's now time for our beer of the week. Bum, 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 beer of the week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how we all got that. How we do? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good about that, that one. That was, that was nice. Yeah, uh, that was somebody solid. asked where we're located at. We are in Spokane, Washington. Uh, that is the very far eastern side of it uh, where it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, pretty great. Oh, we got Joel, hi from Switzerland. Ooh, Hi from yeah. England. Yeah, we have people tuning in all around the world. How? Awesome. How? Uh, no offense to the people, but yeah. like, how much do you believe that? Are they really from Switzerland, or can you just put anywhere? Oh, uh, I, uh, I believe it because well, I don't know. It's just as much of a crapshoot if they say a random uh, state. But when you look at or a random country, but when you look at our uh, metrics, who's watching us? The number hmm. the yeah, number we, two is uh, Australia, and then Canada, and oh, then uh, there's cool. a ton. Like Switzerland has a really big mm -hmm. homebrew, so they're yeah, like okay. they're awesome. on the list. So. What a time to be yeah. alive! Yeah. I know. Right? Right? Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing to look at this because, you know, we can like actually see where people are viewing from and be like, wow, that yeah. I mean, there's a lot of dedicated people. It, that's it, cool. It's late in Australia right now. Yeah. Like, the people they're staying up, there, up yeah. to watch us. That's it, awesome. They've Thank been you drinking guys. all day. Jason, Jason <laughs> there's says a real high from Uranus. Yeah, that's that, real. Is, yeah, there we go. that is quality humor. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I felt something this morning. Uh, uh, so um, beer of the week. What are we talking about? Uh, hazy IPA, specialty IPA category 21B. Uh, it's a New England IPA. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys want to give us a breakdown on what a New England is, and I can go grab some. I can go grab some beer. Oh yeah, go grab yeah. some beer. Some yeah. bills. Some bills. Give me a little bit. Give me a little bit. All right. So, uh, uncoincidentally, uh, one of the beers that these guys are known for is a New England hazy style. Uh, and it's delicious. I will have to admit, though, every time that I'm in, that is not what I drink. Like, I, I definitely want something Same. else. No, no, but, no offense taken. Uh, no. Uh, it's a, a phenomenal. I love to see it everywhere. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no. I will take that Kolsch right there. For sure. It's going in my face hole. Let's break it down. Overall impression, like, doing uh, hazy IPAs, what is that to you? Like, what do you need in a hazy IPA oh, overall? Man, it's uh, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, a beer that is malt neutral-ish uh, and just packed with hops. Late, late boil or 
no boil at all hops and just a ton of a ton of dry hopping uh either double or triple or single uh basically it's just juice it's juice it's it's, it's it's juice with alcohol let's, yeah. just, let's be honest here it's that's what it is uh, i mean and it's wonderful it's opaque um, it's citrus and it's yeah. low bitterness yeah, uh, you know, I mean, that's right in there. That's what you're looking for it on that. Uh, I will say, in the, especially when you're bringing up juice and juicy IPAs, mm. what distinguishes juicy to hazy to me is hazy still has a little bit of nice hot bite to it. And it's oh, not yeah. quite all it, fruit juice. You know, it's like, yeah, there's still hops in there. Yeah. And you taste the juice and you're like, oh, no, man, this is this is like straight fruit juice. That's what's dudes. great with, about the style is that like there's a there's like a, a swing from like one end to the other. There's a range. Yeah. If you go to like a place like maybe like Lumberbeard, they're more of like a yeah. hazy, like more of a, a, a typical West Coast, but hazy with more tropical juice flavor to it. Whereas mm-hmm. us, like we're really straight good. up New England, mm-hmm. uh, very soft body, uh, you know. Good mouthfeel and, and just a ton of, ton of I hate aroma. That. I hate that phrase. You don't like mouthfeel? Why, why is that a beer phrase? I, yeah. I use it all the time too. Mouthfeel. <laughs> mouthfeel. mouthfeel. Well, because it, uh, someone I, said it I, a long time ago, and now it's stuck. Not stuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's literal. I mean, how it I mean, feels yeah. in your mouth. It's. I well, love texture, those Texture. I mean, character. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, There's probably a better word for it that you know that's not going to turn everyone into like a you know a 70s porno or whatever. <laughs> I like the creaminess <laughs> of creamy, the mouthfeel. Creamy, uh, moist mouthfeel. Yeah. Before we get before we get too much, let's go ahead and introduce this beer this was sent to us by someone sorry i don't i don't see your name on that and i didn't bring the paper over uh but it's called the siswell uh it's a barrel fermented pilsner at 5.4 percent abv uh five day fermentation it uses a little bit of oh so it's fermented in a rye whiskey barrel um lagered for three weeks after that and then sent to us so well thank you um if you are currently watching let us know if this is your beer and uh if you want to tell us a little bit more about it all right, uh, Ruindu, um, you have a great question or a great question in here, but there's a point that we're going to hit on a little bit later about hazy IPAs and where they actually get their haze from. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I like uh, what was brought up over here about the creaming, the, the actual creaminess, the fluffiness of the mouthfeel. We're going to use that word uh, of the flavor of the texture of the beer in your mouth. New England, yeah, so the fluffy puffiness, really of it. nice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> fluffy puffy is named accurately. It's like drinking a cloud, um, and that's that's something important to me. I think in uh, hazy IPAs, especially that I think a lot of people are missing. They're getting haze in there, but they're making kind of that thin West Coast style haze mm-hmm. and they're missing that full bodiness. Hmm. That's really interesting, this uh, yeah. Pilsner. A little bit of barrel quality on it and it's, it's, mm. it's I like this. It's weird how it shoots through because it's a Pilsner, there's like nothing to hide behind so it's like straight, mm. straight to the barrel flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. It's, it's a fourth use rye whiskey. And I don't think I'm getting a, a lot of that whiskey. But I don't get whiskey. A, yeah, the whiskey's not coming. It's, yeah. But there's like a tannic booms. mouthfeel that I think come, probably comes from the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Just a guesstimate. Um, yeah. Have we talked about aroma at all? What are we, where are we all right, at All right, so uh, we're just on overall impression. Let's break it down into the actual uh, style guideline. Aroma, take us away. Um, aroma, it's going to be basically really fruity uh, in general. You're going to get a ton of aroma that comes from all the, the, the good oils that are in the lupulin glands, all the terpenes that uh, you know, give it a, a wide array of of aroma and i'm going to say general fruitiness even though this kind of breaks it down a little bit more um because it can be um it can be it can be fruity in a lot of different ways citrus tropical fruit berries like there's a lot of different ways you can take it so i'm going to say broadly fruity aroma uh and you know i'm even going to include coconut in there especially with some of the new sabro Sabro. talus coming out too hey coconut's a fruit i think is it i Uh, yeah what what is it what's the consensus it might be a nut uh, it, yeah, I don't know. I feel like well, it's in the name. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Somebody, but, somebody answer but, this question in the yeah. comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody. So, who's someone's gonna call us out on it for sure. Google this. Answer this for us. <laughs> right. uh, we're yeah, we could uh, Google it, but that's effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, throwing that in there, you're you're getting a lot of fruitiness. I would say that you know having the uh, pine and resin would be inappropriate in this beer, but yeah. I would accept some dankness. Yeah, you can get a little bit of pine in there. It's uh, but you know you don't want it to be the overwhelming. Right you know, overall kind of flavor. It's, it's definitely yeah. a fruit because it's, it's got a lot of the hops are, it's kind of hard to, to, to find a hop that doesn't have like a hint of pine or, or dankness to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does say on this so. that grassiness and uh, herbaceousness is, is inappropriate to the style, but I would yeah. say pine pine is, is a little bit, it's going to be fitting in the style, yeah. especially if you lean towards something with a little bit of a bitterness to it, you know. 
Uh, I would, Columbus, like that would be yeah, a nice definitely. thing. That fruitiness, that big pine resin dang, <laughs> like perfect for a hazy. Well, oh, yeah, that one turns in. That's like a, that's like weed pungent, but it's it also turns into grapefruit yeah. if you dry hop it. So yeah, yeah. Columbus is super fun. I love that. All right. Uh, uh, Color, anything else on aroma or want to go into some colors, some flavors, one of those things? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, color, color, I think is, you know, not so important in this. It's a wide range on there. I would accept most of it as long as you're not going into like. Except the brown. No. Don't yeah. do a brown. Yeah, don't do a brown. I call it purple, but yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. put crystal malt. In, in anything. Hazy IBA. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> definitely not in your hazy. Uh, yeah. I like these guys. I like these guys already. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> we'll get, we'll get like 45 comments. Oh, you oh. know what I should have printed out? Um, oh. There was somebody that sent me a, a, a Genus live stream bingo um, sheet on Instagram. Yeah, if that's brought up in the awesome. if that's brought up in the live stream, and that's one of the marks. Like one of them is uh, is Ask Corbs asked about um, sorbic acid. <laughs> All right, no, I'm going to call you out on this one. Yes, Peter did paint his nails. He does it because his son also likes to paint his nails, but... Uh, and I like to match him. He wants to support him and be like, hey, let's do it, because this is cool. So I think that's great. You know, he's an awesome dad. Yeah. It's not, not Ryan influenced. It also yeah. looks really good. I don't know. If you can't see that's it impressive. up close. Actually, like, those, those, those are really My wife, nice. did, my yeah. wife does it, yeah. Oh, it's okay. got the Minnie Mouse vibe going on right now. It, yeah. it does, I but I enjoy that. It it's <laughs> it's it art. It is. Really. All right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, color I would say is not too important, especially because your grain selection on it probably won't really allow you to get too wild on color anyway. Well, yeah. I would say color is pretty important. Orange. Well, right, I mean, it, no, yeah. it, the, as so far as shooting for a specific yeah. like color in there, gotcha. it it's gonna like, be it's yeah. gonna be orange. Some, somewhere or between yellow and light orange. yellow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> anything beyond you know, that. Usually yeah, your yeah. doubles are a little bit darker. Uh, yeah, they just, just got more. Yeah. Mm. Just more overall malt, more yeah. reasons yeah. to get this. Uh, Hayden has a really good point, and I totally forgot we talked about this. It's uh, it's fruit if you wouldn't put it in a salad, and it's a vegetable if you'd put it in a salad. I mean, I make so. a really nice fruit salad. Coconut, <laughs> coconut yeah. salad. Did you make yeah. a coconut salad? Yeah, yeah, walnuts you'd put in a salad. Actually, salad coconut made, like, in salad know. would probably be pretty good, uh, you know, yeah. depending on the salad. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm not a, I don't think I'm a coconut and salad fan. Yeah, I'm right. not a coconut and beer fan. I'm not a huge fan of Sabra. Uh, I yeah, I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm not on there that. yet. I'm not, not there yet. yet. I disagreed. I mean, I w not, not yeah. necessarily for like an IPA, may maybe. Even though I've had some really good Sabra IPAs, uh, Whistle Punk made a really good one. But again, yeah, I like the big juicy hops more than I like that. Uh, but I will say something like that or a coconut flavor and a dark beer for sure. Well, yeah. uh, well we've got Sabra on contract, so you better start. I'm, with <laughs> I, I'm not. I have not uh, come around to Sabra yet. We put uh, Sabro into a tropical stout, actually, just uh, last huh? week or the week before. Yeah, actually, so uh, it adds just that nice little bit of tannicness in uh, there. Yeah, Sabro so. just comes through as diacetyl to me. Uh, I don't know why. I can see that. Mm. Yeah. It's 100 percent my my. There's a, yeah, there's a way that your brain might make that switch. It's like it's got right. that coconutty yeah. slickness, and that slickness is like yeah. diacetyl. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah. see that that logical leap. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, so flavor. Flavor. Here we are on mm. flavor for that. Uh, we talked a little bit about it and overall uh, impression. Uh, right off the sheet, it, flavor is high to very high, and that's big in this. These are going to be big hop bombs, but not traditional like bitter hop way in here. This is going to be really big, fruity aroma and ca uh, flavor characters. It's the antithesis to the West Coast IPA in the yeah. way that they've been for the past 20 years, basically. I yeah. prefer my hazies to be mostly buttered popcorn. <laughs> those, are the, those are the best. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you dry hop at the right time and then immediately cold crash, yeah. then you're good to go. <laughs> it's still the most delicious. <laughs> I'm yeah. selling my shares of Yaya. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. the one thing that I'll, it does say uh, really big ripe fruit flavors, and I'm going to add, because these guys already touched on it, um, that's different than overripe fruit which because that usually comes from the fruit oxidizing and oxidized fruit is a flavor that can come from these beers if you're not careful and you don't do everything low oxygen um, or add your ascorbs yeah uh, definitely uh, on that uh, I'm gonna say I mean why your malt characteristics uh, should play a really big importance here but it is gonna be a background character oh, yeah. uh, it, while you're getting sweetness off of them uh, and the puffiness it's not necessarily like Mm, big malty beer. Yeah. You're using yeah. it to play with texture rather than uh, a whole lot of flavor. Yeah. Um, mm. And a little bit of, I mean, color, obviously, but uh, you, can, you can pretty much use anything from a Pilsner to a two row. I mean, we probably wouldn't go any darker than a two row, maybe something that's like 2.5 SRM, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've played around with some Vienna 
in uh, one of our hazies, and yeah. it adds uh, that orange. Yeah, it gets you yeah. that orange color. Yeah, and that uh, sometimes <coughs> might lead into the perception of it because a lot they were originally just supposed to be like orange juice looking beers, right? Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, back in the back sure. in the old days, I think it's evolved to be broader <laughs> yeah, now. The olden days of <laughs> <Yeah>. 2014, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The way back in the. Yeah. We uh, we use Halcyon for ours, um, mm. and like honestly, most of it is just for that nice, soft, sweet character coming off of it to really help emphasize the hops. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Hal Halcyon's. Uh, if you guys didn't know this, the best malt in the world. So, <laughs> ooh, ooh, we got an answer to our coconut. Uh, all right, botanically speaking, a coconut is a fibrous, one seated uh, droop known droop? as a wow. dry droop. So well, however, you're losing just... loose definitions. The coconut can be all three a fruit, a nut, and a seed. Wow. Kurt, that doesn't help at all. <laughs> Zero help. It's added, a seed. It, from now on, it's a seed. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So, I mean, uh, it, you know, that's a, it. I would say the important thing about a hazy, uh, as far as the flavor is going, is to really have that nice, soft, sweet malt and the huge, huge pungent hops can going I, can on. Can I speak uh, to Shannon real quick here? Oh, yeah. yeah. My latest New England IPA, I got some Bunk Galaxy from the local homebrew shop. Uh, yeah, pretty much all Galaxy is Bunk now. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a, a, a somewhat of a controversial statement here, but uh, it's, it's really gone significantly danker mm -hmm. than it used to be. Uh, I think it's. I think the flavor of Galaxy is migrating from like a super hype boy hop in say like 2013 when it was really hard to get. Yeah. Where it was just like straight passion fruit and orange and mango and all these delicious tropical flavors. Uh, you're probably not going to get that now anymore. Uh, and I don't know if it's how they're growing it or it's the environment that it's being grown in. Uh, but Galaxy is. Eh. It's the last it's, time I checked. I think the myrcene content was just off the root, off the charts, it's, like yeah, crazy high myrcene content. Yeah. So you're not going to get you're not going to get those flavors you probably got five years ago. But well, one silver lining is the cost has come down. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, was a, it was a, it was a thirty five dollar a pound hop, you know, like two years ago, and now you you know we can get it for like eighteen bucks a pound. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyways. that's way better. So another, I would, I would say another significant characteristic uh, or ingredient to a New England is the water profile. It's really oh, overlooked yeah. often. Oh, yeah. Um, the yeast, but really, really uh, the water profile. Uh, I, I would say the water profile is probably extremely important in this. And this is probably where most hazy brewers fail. Yeah, where do, you, where do you guys go with yours? Like, do you go, uh, you know, 120 chlorides, or do you go 300 chlorides, or? Uh, we do, we do still about three to one. So yeah. typically a 150 to 50 okay. uh, chloride sulfate. Um, although if we really want to treehouse it up, we uh, we do four to one. Yeah. Like a 200 uh, to, to 50. What have you? What beer have you done that on? Division Street? Uh, we do way back home, number three. Oh, okay. Uh, that way, last summer, I don't know. I've done a few of them that way. Uh, I think from Spokane with Love might have been that. Yeah, way. probably that. Was and, and the new from Spokane Love with Love will be yeah. a four to one. So okay, yeah. So I mean, that's that kind of, that's where a lot of ours fall into too. We fall into uh, uh, more like a three to one, um, or but overall content wise, we keep it down. It probably one twenty to one fifty is as, as high as we go usually. Um, that said, we also had a. And I don't know if you uh, use sodium at all, but we also make sure we have a sodium content of somewhere between 30 and 50. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, my sodium tends to be a little bit higher than that. I know it's it's out of range for most, but uh, it, it's a little bit more like 50 to 75. Okay, um, yeah. Just yeah. based on our water profile out of our, our tap, so. Nice. I want to I wanna ask you guys' this opinion real quick. Yeah. Uh, getting back to like the body and the texture. So, the you know, a lot feel? of. The mouth feel. Yeah, the mouth feel. Yeah. Uh, it feels inside your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, a big part of that is like flaked oats, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and technically, flaked oats are an adjunct. But what is the real consensus from you guys? Is it an adjunct? I mean, would it, you consider an adjunct? I guess technically, at that percentage, it wouldn't be. I mean, just by the definition of adjunct. But I still consider it. I still consider it an adjunct because it's non-diastatic, and I'm using it for what I would use an adjunct for. So I still consider it an adjunct. Gotcha. Yeah. We aim for about That's good uh, between oat malt and, and flaked oats, or f I think we use malted wheat sometimes or flaked wheat, a uh, combination of all those. We, we aim for about 40% adjunct okay. overall. Yeah, it's it pretty depends high. on yeah. if we're doing juicy or hazy. Yeah. If we do juicy, it's flaked rice for the clarity. If we do uh, hazy, it's normally mostly flaked oats and a little flaked yeah. wheat. Yeah. I mean, I ask because I often tell people that like fluffy is a non-adjunct New England. Uh, but technically, I guess it is. I mean, yeah. so I, use, I've, I've struggled over this. It's about seven yeah. percent flaked oats and fluffy. Yeah. So I don't know. That's under ten percent. That's pretty low. I mean, yeah. it is though. So yeah, it just it, uh, you should rely on the base malt for a lot of the flavor building and a lot of the yeah. Texture. I mean, it's it's in there for that uh, for that mouthfeel. 
Um, yeah. But uh, you know, for for our Division Street, uh, which is our double hazy, there's there's no adjuncts at all. It's like Kvike. Yeah, there's Kvike. <laughs> yeah. We use Kvike in there. Yeah. Uh, but it's a like eighty percent two row, yeah. and then uh, the rest is white wheat and Vienna, and that's it. What uh, uh, what strain of Kvike do you use? Uh, Voss. Voss. Yeah. For that nice oranginess. Yep. Yeah. That is our orange double action. Can a hazy be juicy? Uh, Can a juicy be hazy? Yes. Uh, this is actually like the next part that we're <laughs> yeah. getting oh, into man. here, uh, here yeah. is that this is still an evolving style. Um, I mean, this is super, super new. We can get to the, uh, the the oxymoronic section of the D, uh, the uh, BJCP, which is the history. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> I haven't got as into that yet. So uh, yeah, both of them can be in there. I, uh, juicy and hazy has been uh, throwing around, and I think that personally, I think there are distinctions between the two. Um, but I would say that they're both in the same family of beers. You know. Yeah, to me, a juicy is a uh, fresh squeezed IPA. Remember yeah. that? You remember yeah. that from yeah. ten years ago? Uh, Back when that was new and good. Yeah, yeah, I mean that was like holy crap. You know, this doesn't taste like pine salt, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's not like 120 IBUs. So that is a juicy. It's a great, great example of a juicy IPA. Yeah, yeah. hazy is designed yeah, to be. Is hazy. Yeah, yeah. Pretty self explanatory. Yeah. I, I would say that juicies can straddle line between can go clear and, and hazy on that, but uh, the biggest definer for me is i mean juicies are fruit juice they're sweet yeah. i mean hazies can be sweet beers but juicies are sweet mm -hmm. fruit juice beers or hazies more like yeah i got like a fruity hoppy ipa uh, we did uh one of the one of ours so we do a way back home series which is uh, it's different every time and um the second time i did it i thought i thought i'd do a little experiment i was going to try to make a new england ipa with us05 Mm. Uh, failed spectacularly. It was the single <laughs> clearest beer I've ever made in my entire life. All the processes that we had done typically to make a hazy IPA or a New England IPA, we, I did. Uh, but unfortunately, it uh, came out crystal clear. But it was incredibly juicy. Yeah. So uh, we just yeah. kinda, we called it like a juicy pale ale, and uh, it was great. But yeah, uh, yeah. I think it that didn't right quite there work as hazy. That's kind of the uh, difference between juicy and hazy, right there. I mean, did it come out more? Juicy and clear. There, there's a juicy yeah. IPA. Yeah, you know? I think that, so. I will add that the, nom the nomenclature of all this is going to change from uh, from person to person. So right. I think it's one of those things that we all uh, call them different things, and we have the idea of why we call them different things. But I don't think there's a definitive. Someone said that this is supposed to be this. Is you know, mm. I don't think there's a that. Mm. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm on the same page as you guys. I think the juicy is you know it can be a very very clear juicy, but yeah, uh, it's all about the ho the hopping at that point to get that maximum. Um, fresh juice squeeze right. inside your mouthfeel. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a shameless plug right here <coughs> right now. Uh, Ledger 89, you're gonna you want to do the uh, brew for Caster Muncher? Go on to our brewer's friend and uh, well, actually first do no, the one that I, says kit. Just like yeah, do the one that says kit or just order the kit from us and we'll send it to you. The That's apartment the best brewer way to do also. That. What's up? Good morning. So the yeah. apartment brewer, another YouTuber. Check another him out. YouTuber. All right, uh, so a little bit of history on this. You printed all this out. I feel like we should, uh, you know, at least talk about it. Yeah, you know, we can just, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a loose guideline. Just gives us something to talk about if we run out of ideas. Uh, if you want to know the history, then uh, Hetty Topper uh, is pretty much considered to be the original one in there. And uh, people loved it, couldn't get a hold of it, so they tried to make it themselves. We couldn't figure it out for a minute because they were using a specific yeast strain and a way different hopping schedule. Then we did. Yeah, uh, a lot of people attribute the origin to uh, uh, Hill Farmstead instead, um, but uh, most I, people are wrong. Yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Topper is how I learned it. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the Conan strain, I believe, is from uh, the Alchemist uh, Bar Barbarian, or um, I don't know what it is, and anything else. It's Barbarian, Vermont, and Vermont, yeah, Vermont. 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 Yeah, so I mean, you know, there you go. It was just a response to a climate. When, you know, you're out west and there's really nice hot days, drinking a really, you know, thick sweet beer generally isn't the best thing. So we went for nice, dry, bold IPAs. Mm -hmm. If you're back east where, you know, the climate's a little bit different, a little bit softer, a little bit more humid, that nice sweet beer is really delicious, you know? So there, there we go. Yeah. Nice. History. Similar to uh, New American, New World IPA is what it says, but often with more oats or wheat in the grist. We already talked about the adjunct. Um, less caramel malts, which we all know shouldn't go in any beer. Nope. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's, uh, 
Uh, it also adds that uh, the dry hop is going to be a biotransformation dry hop, and some people do a two-stage too. I don't know what you guys do, but I'm um, dry hopping during active fermentation, which if you're using quiet, you probably only have like two or three days to get that dry hop in there. Then, yeah. We yeah, we kind of mix it up. Uh, some of our uh, New Englands, we do a double dry hop once during active at about day four or five, and then as it's kind of winding down, and then um, again once it's done. Um, but it, for us, you know, I I can do a I can do a dry hop on day ten and it'll still be hazy. So. Yeah. Uh, we've done, we've honestly done no dry hopped hazies or juicies uh, just because we, uh, it's such a big whirlpool addition that yeah, yeah, all yeah. that juice flavors in there. Or if you've got, I don't know if you guys Most, have a hop back, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, Most of the time we don't dry hop or juicies. Yeah. Um, but I, tons did, of hops in the whirlpool. Yeah. The hazies, right. I'll generally dry hop for more aroma on there, but the juicies, I generally just leave alone. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, the, the biotransformation actually helps add to the haze by cleaving off, you know, more oils that are going to be in the, mm. um, so the, there's an oily version of the haze. Uh, this is obviously going to be different than like the, the starch and protein version mm -hmm. of the Haze. Uh, While you're on haze, you want to talk about what causes haze? Uh, I mean, yeah, let's go into. Well, look, like, we haven't done our favorite malt tops and yeast yet. We didn't oh, even. Sorry. So, uh, do you guys have a favorite malt tops or yeast for for this style? My favorite malt is caramel malt. Any <laughs> any level. Yeah, C one hundred and fifty probably. Caramel, <laughs> yeah. caramel eighty. Yeah. yeah, the darker the better. Uh, I would say Golden Promise. Nice. Give it a, give it a whirl if you haven't already. Yeah, Golden um, Promise I think is on the same kind of wavelength as uh, our, the reason we use Halcyon. Yeah. So. Um, actually, Golden Promise. I was I was talking earlier about how you should use a base malt around two to two and a half SRM. But I think Golden Promise is like three or three, three and a yeah. half. So. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> um, Thank you, sir. Tops, gosh. Hypocrite. Uh, any, yeah. Totally. Galaxy, obviously, for that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Galaxy. 100%. Uh, <laughs> it's hard, man. You know, you can, honestly, like, so I used to like Citra a lot, and it was really hard to come by back in the day, and, and Citra's kind of like Galaxy. It's kind of getting very dank. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're leaving it on the vine longer. They're trying to extract more alphas out of it, um, and it's, it's messing with the flavors, and so the, the, the last <laughs> batch of Citra I got was just a dank mess. Um, but uh, yeah. you know, I still like to play with it. Uh, there's a lot of new ones. Eldorado is. Eldorado is a really fun. One. I like. Uh, I think Eldorado. Yeah, um, that'd be my choice. But uh, yeah, there's some newer ones out there. That uh, gosh, the guy from Hopsteiner just visited me the other day, talking about uh, Lotus and Trident and all these other new ones that I haven't even heard of. And Lo I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure some of the homebrews have played around with it. I, so, I ordered some Trident, yeah. Trident recently. I'm excited uh, I'm to see what that does. Excited to play with them. So a lot of new stuff coming out. There's some blends uh, that they do now. Like uh, she was talking about one that's supposed to be Citra-like. It's got like Bravo, Calypso, and something else in it. So that's uh, hmm. super interesting. Oh, Idaho 7. Yeah, I like that, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, a good, good call. Uh, that's a good one. So, yeah. What about you guys? Um, my, so my favorite malt is going to be Halcyon. Uh, if we're going to style, though, I feel like it's, you can easily throw in something like flaked oats as a you know a, a malt that people need to have on their radar for the style. So okay. we can use that for the malts of the week. One of those two. You guys, it'll be a voting. You guys decide. <laughs> yeah. um, hops. I want to throw people off with hops. I want to come up with something that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So I'm going to go back to Columbus mm. oh, just because if, if done right in the Whirlpool and Dry Hop, it doesn't just give you all the dankness that you expect you know, all the things we're trying to avoid with those overly galaxy and citra, you know, myrosine bombs. Uh, but it turns into like a hint of grapefruit on top of it. So mm -hmm. let's throw that in there. Another new, uh, yeah. another old one that actually works is Bravo. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's one that people are playing with in the uh, Whirlpool and Dry Hop now. Bravo, is, is that related to Comet or is that similar to Comet? I don't know. Mm. Uh, Comet's, Comet's a good one to play with. I know Comet was yeah. like the uh, the OG. If you were to, back in 1995, if you were to make a hazy, that'd probably be your hop of choice. <laughs> the only hop of choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little grapefruity, um, but uh, it works. Yeah. yeah. I'm Would you see any New Zealand hops on a hazy? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, a lot of those. We're yeah. doing one with, I don't know, is Rakao? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, New Zealand? Zealand. Zealand. yeah, we're doing one with Rakao here uh, in June. So. Is Galaxy Australian or New Zealand? Australian. Australian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Nelson Savan, which I would use in a hazing in a heartbeat, yeah. it's uh, New Zealand. Yeah, we're doing From Spokane with Love with Nelson. Yeah. So. I would say New Zealand hops are like almost exclusive to hazies. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, uh, I they mean, they you know. work really well in Pilsners and Hazy oh, yeah. and, and yeah. New Orleans. Uh, those seem to be the two diametrically opposite styles. So, sounds with. like you guys need to make a cold yeah. IPA now. Moteca. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Vic Secret. Ooh, Vic yeah. Vic Secret. I forget this that. is a yeah. hop that I think people forget the about. Hell out of that. That's a good yeah. call. Most favorite Hazy that I've ever had was Headful of Dynamite version 2. Uh, and that was Vic Secret and Columbus as the hops. Hmm. Yeah. And it was just so stupidly 
amazingly good. Ah, it's man. Like straight orange juice. Like, it was, it was quite it a bit was, of a big secret, and I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I think it's just one of those hops that it, it's a beautiful, wonderful hop that a lot of brewers just kind of forget about because it's an older uh, Australian variety. Well, it's secret. It is. Yeah. It, it how, is would secret. Even, how would you even know How would you even know that? Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Unless you're in the know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you're a lingerie model. <laughs> that's right that's right um, i get it <laughs> <laughs> so yeast let's do some yeast on this uh we're talking about malt and are we done with malt and hops yeah i think i think so yeah well i would also throw a heidelberg a, a heidelberg is a brilliant uh malt Very for this light, light. Yeah. yeah the, the apartment yeah. brewer just ordered some heidelberg and said he uh, enjoyed it so you guys just all need to take our recommendations whenever we throw malts at you. Exactly. Best Pilsner malt in the world is Heidelberg. Best malt overall in the world is Halcyon. That's Especially all you need to know. Especially if you can order it from Genus. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. All you in Australia, if you're happy to pay, you know, $200 in shipping or more. Yeah. <laughs> Worth it. We'll send it. <laughs> we'll send it. Uh, yeah, yeast. Yeast on there. Um, you know, going, going for uh, hazies and juicies. Uh, honestly, my personal uh, preference you know, is... I'm gonna throw two of them out there. It's either dry hop from Imperial, mm -hmm. uh, or it's going to be some quite strains. Mm. So you like fermenting warm, is what you're saying? Oh, I love fermenting <laughs> things warm. Well, the dry, all right. So the, if you haven't used Imperial, dry hop is a mixture of the Conan strain as well as Sactois, uh, which is what we thought was a, a Britannia Micey strain for a long time, and it's beautiful. It punches so many big, funky, fruity flavors out of there but the Conan restrains it a little bit from going too far. Yeah. One thing that I'll, I'll add that everyone should probably have on the radar or know about is that if you're using either a Quike or uh, something like Dry Hop that has the sac wash strain that you want to ferment warm, um, I think Dry Hop probably works best around 75, uh, but anything that you're fermenting warm in this style, it's really important that you have some way to pressurize your, your fermentation vessel. Uh, yeah. You don't want to open it up to let all those volatiles off. You're not gonna you know, throw this in a bucket fermenter. Yeah. Um, I would say I know a lot of uh, brewers in uh, Maine use London Fog. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's yeah, pretty much any British strain. One. Well, not any, but not any a lot of British strains <clears throat> typically tend to be the, uh, the London Ale 3, um, those types. Uh, I think that's Imperial, what is that, Juice? Juice, I yeah. Think. yeah. Um, there's a few others out there, uh, but, you know, we, 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 tend to, we tend to stick with a... Uh, a, a yeast that's going to leave things a little bit sweeter. Uh, you know, we like to finish our New England IPAs around 10, 18 to ten twenty. Uh, we like so. the, the the lazy yeast mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. fitting for both of us. For us, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just fits right in. At the which, is, which, which yeah. I think to me is kind of something that differentiates a New England IPA from a hazy IPA. So, like a hazy IPA is going to finish a little bit drier. It's going to be like a Conan strain that's going to bring you down to ten twelve or even ten eleven or, or or drier. Yeah. Whereas in New England is going to be a little bit sweeter and a little more mouthy. Yeah. More, more feeling in your mouth. Yes, <laughs> more of that more, mouth. Why don't say it that way? Oral <laughs> feelings. Uh, more. Uh, I'm going to throw one out there just so that everyone has one that's going to be really easy to access, and that's just SO4. Um, yeah. You already mentioned British trains. Most of them being malt leaning are going to work pretty well. But SO4 is super accessible, um, and I believe Whistlefunk uses that as their house juice or hazy mm -hmm. strain. Um, they do some pretty good stuff. They do really good stuff. They're great. <laughs> um, uh, we got a great question by the apartment brewer right here, not to jump well, let's, on Let's technically yet. get into topic topic number one, because this is going to kind of work in topic number one, but then we'll, uh, we're into topic number one, which oh, is how to yeah, pack a lot of okay. juiciness. Yeah. And then we can answer the question because it works in topic number one. It does. Hey, um, doing the most is uh, on here. We already mentioned well, that you sent us mead, and we're going to taste it next week or the week after. One of those two. One question about that. Since we're into the malt tops and yeast, <laughs> should we talk about what actually causes haze in a lot of these? Uh, we're, we're somewhere in the uh, – we're, we're in a category we're somewhere. You know, right. we'll, 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 we'll get it all in there. We're getting in there. <clears throat> all right. So topic one, how to pack the juiciness of hazy IPAs. Um, and we'll answer this question at the beginning of this. Um, just because it, it, it fits in with this, but uh, how do you uh, how do you like to manage hop burn? I'll try to avoid it. Uh, I try to avoid dry hopping to the point that it literally that it happens. But some breweries deliberately make beers with lots of hop burn, and I agree with that. That's uh, I, I'm guessing it's that flavor that you get from a lot of the head full of dynamites that has. I, I, it's like a plantiness. It's that. Uh, too much uh, plant matter hurts your tongue. I, I it get, like yeah, this burns the back of your throat, yeah, kind it's, of thing. To me, it's a it's a it's a green hazy IPA that, that was packaged a little too quickly. Uh, that just hasn't has quite enough time to kind of work its way out. 
Uh, that, that maybe they use a little too many hops, if that's possible. I, I, yeah, um, it's possible. You know, you, yeah. you see some of these these beers with like eight and a half pounds per barrel, and it's like, yeesh, that's 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 where you're getting your hot burn from. Yeah. And then they're packaging mm -hmm. it, you know, on day eight, and so it's like you got all those little. You're, you're literally just drinking hops at yeah. that point. So would a longer cold crash have anything mm -hmm. to do with that? Yeah, it's conditioning like, time, I think, to help it. Yeah, I guess. just just general yeah. conditioning time. Uh, when my when I first started home brewing like ten years ago, uh, I was told something happens in the keg. At, on at week two like, yeah like it's in there for two weeks and then something happens at week two and the beer just totally transforms and i live by that <laughs> we yeah. aren't scientists even yeah. <laughs> we don't have any, like you know scientific reason for that but like something happens on week two in the keg uh, and i think that uh, totally transfers into the commercial space as well um, so i agree that people are packaging beers on like day seven or eight you know you're gonna get a very green uh, beer that has that hot burn, especially if it's a New England IPA versus yeah. something that's maybe sat in the tank and cold crash for a couple of days. So. For whatever that's worth, though, I mean, that's true, and we've certainly found that in reality. Uh, but I had a epiphany from Foundation last night, mm. and it was canned uh, in April. It was like early April, like April 7th, I think. And uh, still had a lot of hot burn. Hmm. I, I was, it was almost uncomfortable. Really? Re really good beer. I love that beer. Definitely delicious. Yeah. I know, but this one in particular. Uh, yeah. I, get, I get it from a lot of the headfuls, and it kind of uh, it frustrates me because they're, so, they're such hype beers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of the headfuls, uh, they end up with that same hot burn. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I get it. I get the flavor. I understand the flavor. I don't know if I like drinking this because it's got that, that yeah. hot burn. Could be the could be the type of hop. I don't, you know, who knows? On the homebrew yeah. scale, we'll throw out. So besides conditioning time, we'll also throw out on the homebrew scale. Just trying to have a way to filter out the hops uh, or let them settle out. Um, that means for one, hops going from the whirlpool into your fermenter, it's super easy to have a way to strain those out going into your fermenter. Um, or what we'd like to do is use an oversized bag in our, in our homebrew kettles, um, mm. big enough that the hops can really float around, um, which kind of goes into one of the topics that we've got to talk about. Uh, but, um, the, but also it's going to restrict the amount of hop material that ends up in your, uh, in your actual fermenter and then in your final package product. Yeah, um, and I think that's literally it. There's just too much actual <coughs> lupulin like glands in there that haven't either been settled out or uh, dissolved into the beer. And you're yeah. basically eating a blade of grass every time. Yeah. It's, got a, yeah. you're, it's a whole salad in a beer. By the way, there's 120 of you watching and only six likes, likes right now. Fix that. Gosh, <laughs> gosh, gosh damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Smash the like button, <laughs> you people. Or slap uh, it. Give it a soft tickle. I'm going to take this you wanna do. break to uh, talk about what we're drinking right now. Oh, this yeah. is a dry Irish stout from a local home brewer called Jake Lemaire. Uh, oh, yeah. This this is awesome, actually. You guys know Jake? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a little bit sweeter than I would expect from a dry Irish stout, but... Yeah. I'm okay with that. I, me, yes. me too, yeah. It's 100%. With the amount of roastiness, you kind of need that, actually. You need something um, to balance roast, that yeah. roastiness out. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it was it? Was it... Was there anything added to this? I mean, no, not that I know of. I, uh, okay. I think he was actually doing this for one of the Brewer of the Year competitions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I, yeah. he's got my vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is stupid good. good. I almost thought I got a little bit of whiskey out of it. That could have been wishful thinking. <laughs> I can kind of see where you get that. You know I mean, mean, there's some high tannic notes that are almost yeah. oaky in there. And yeah, maybe more nice sweet carameliness. Yeah. Or could have come from the uh, the residual from your your brain still being on a pilsner. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. could have been that the rye whiskey pilsner. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Bruno uh, Dave oh, says, totally agree do. with the two-week thing. My beer yeah. is at its best just before the keg is empty. <laughs> it's a, some yeah. quick drinking, and I support it. That's right. All right. So uh, other maximum uh, other topics on, uh, or sorry, in topic one, maximum contact time with uh, hops. Yeah. So one thing that a lot of homebrewers, uh, I don't think, uh, think about, especially homebrewers that are used to bagging their hops, uh, but a lot of times you're losing a ton of utilization, even with those little uh, those hop spiders, little metal things that you put on the side of your, uh, your kettle. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a way for those hops to fully touch all of your beer liquid. My wording is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest things I struggled with when I first started doing these as a homebrewer is the hops would just like float. Yeah. On the top. And so you go back like three days later and the hops are still sitting on the top of the carboy and you're like, eh, you shake the thing and you try to get them to fall down. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't really have a good answer as to how to fix that. But that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's actually, I mean, this is a tangent, but that's one of the things that uh, Lambic, old Lambic brewers used to love to do is float their whole leaf hops on top of their beer to mm. uh, keep the antibacterial properties yeah. in there so okay. it wouldn't spoil. <laughs> so hops do float. I mean, that's a problem in there. You're not getting contact. You're not mm. getting maximum contact. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, how do we solve that? 
Our, yeah, our, I mean, our biggest answer, and Apartment Brewer kind of jumped on it already, is tell me how to hop back without a hop back. Um, some sort of a hop back, some sort of a way to uh, um, basically have hops that are in a system that makes it so that your entire beer has to go over those hops is going to really maximize that contact time. And it also acts as a filtration mechanism. So you're able to get rid of a lot of the plant material, kind of killing two birds because we love murdering birds. <laughs> yeah. Two of them specifically. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, then we're done. <laughs> just the <just to> two. <laughs> just, to, just two. Um, so that's one of those things. Uh, putting uh, hops into a bag, you know, either in the boil or into uh, your carboy or in the hop screens, hop spiders, you are losing efficiency on that. So th that's one thing to be aware of. If you're losing efficiency, you might need to add more hops to compensate for it. Well, what about multiple bags mm, to spread the hop? Yeah. Spread the goodness. And don't yeah. tie your bags tight. This shouldn't be a, a little hard ball of hops. You need I've some had, loose. I've had yeah. some bags be pulled out and then you open it up and it looks like the inside of the hops are just dry. dry. Yeah. Yeah. Put a, put a marble in the bag. Yeah. See, Sanitize yeah. marble, obviously. You know, kind of weigh it down. Weigh yeah. it down. Um, that is actually a trick that I use here. It's not a marble. It's some stainless steel fittings for our uh, mm. brewery. We'll throw a tri-clamp in there. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, a part of a tri-clamp. Throw it in the bottom. It weighs the bag down in there, and so it, I can get in there and stir up the hops in the bag. And, you know, so. Jimmy's got a good question. What if you recirculate through the metal hop spider? Um, it's going to work, but only if you don't have, let's say, eight ounces of hops in a hop spider. That's just going to be too much. The hops expand, and they block the water from going through. Yes. With uh, small amounts, it works really good. So let's say you're doing a beer that needs two ounces in that hop spider. It's probably going to work pretty great. And you're not going to lose efficiency, really, with a, with a good recirculation. But if you have eight ounces, they're going to do that same thing where they puff up and kind of protect the interior hops for whatever reason. Yeah. So it, just things to uh, think about there. Um, you already talked about that. I was going to say close transfer through post boil hops, but with a uh, hop back. Yeah, basically a hop the same rocket. thing as a, as a dry hop, but mm. or as a as a hop back, but with mm -hmm. dry hopping. Yeah. With dry hopping, uh, on there. Those are great ways to uh, get some maximum exposure on there. Maximize your exposure. Expose yourself to everybody. All right. Uh, so now let's. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't really get too far on <laughs> on the, the the last part of the outline, but we oh, also no, wanted to throw is, in. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Okay. Can we show this. <laughs> some, <laughs> there's, there's, one line. there's one line. There's one line. There's more that we'll we'll get to. <laughs> the, the, somebody asked about this in the beginning of the stream of haziness and hazy IPAs and what that actually is, and a lot of people mm -hmm. thinks that haziness in IPAs is from the yeast. While the yeast does cause some haze forming particles and uh, compounds to, to form, that was a bad way to say that, Compound it's not forming. specifically the yeast uh, uh, in this. It has a lot more to do with everything in your process uh, as well as malt. It's not suspended yeast. No, it's that, not suspended. It's, you shouldn't have to flip your keg no. or <laughs> store it upside down <laughs> I to know get a hazy IPA. I know some bars around here that do that, and it's uh, like, yeah. what are you doing? It is, uh, it is definitely a some of, some of the parts uh, type of beer. You kind of have to do everything yeah. along the way to get it to really be a, a stable haze. I mean, we can take a fluffy puffy and, and leave it in a can for a year, and it's still going to be hazy a yeah. year later. So. That's um, that's a big thing. If any of your hazy IPAs go clear, they didn't do the process right. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, this is one big factor in hazy IPAs and a really important ingredient. Um, adding flour to yeah, your that's what oh, you want to do. Yeah. Hand fermentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just in the can. Each can is yeah, can <laughs> individually yeah. floured. Right. Uh, uh, that was a joke. Don't actually don't actually do that, guys. Thanks, Apartment <laughs> Brewer. We, uh, thanks for hanging with us uh, today yeah. on Mother's Day. We'll see you uh, next week. Yeah, appreciate it, Parker. Yeah, um, that's a he, you know some of you think that he's joking. No, this that's is something that actual <laughs> professional yeah. brewers do: is add flour to their beers to make them hazy. None, no, none of the four, three <laughs> professional brewers yeah, here. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> uh, none uh, of us do it. Yeah. Uh, but, so let's talk about uh, what actually makes that stable haze and the things that we're going to be doing to um, to make a haze that's not going to drop out, basically. So we don't want to rely on things that are going to be overly heavy, basically. That's going to be the yeast. No matter what yeast it is, if it's super powdery, eventually it's going to flocculate. Uh, and it's not going to be, you know, you know, directly long-chain starches or uh, even long-chain proteins. What we're looking for is... Uh, 
medium chain starch that is going to be able to uh, create a haze that works well with the hop oils, basically. A hop oil, the amount of hop oils are going to be a big part of what causes some sort of a murkiness in a hazy IPA. Um, so basically what he's saying in there is you're using starchy uh, malts, uh, like flaked malts or wheats or oats in there, to create molecules that hop oils can jump onto and create hop haze. Uh, and a lot of that also comes through uh, the hopping techniques too. Uh, throwing in big bittering additions don't give you a lot of the molecules that create the hop haze in there, while a bunch of the late end additions do. And that's why you see a bunch of the whirlpool dry hopping additions going in there is to get some of that hop haze coming out of it. It's true. And like to your point earlier though, the yeast, it's not suspended yeast that makes it hazy, but the yeast is an important factor uh, yeah. in a hazy beer because it's a typically a lazier yeast and it can't break down uh, the like flaked oat sugars essentially yeah. and so it's yeah. a lot of residual sugar uh, that creates some haze as well. I wondered if, if the how, how much of an effect the the water profile like we were just talking about the three to one the four to one yeah, yeah. yeah. huge I mean, effect you know if we were to do like a the a, salinity a yeah. 50 and a 50 on a hazy, would it would it still be hazy if we, if we did everything else that we typically? Do? I, I want to say that total. Uh, I mean, just like when you do, a, I don't know if you've done a hard seltzer, but if you do a hard seltzer that's high mineral content, that you're going to mm -hmm. have a harder time getting that to be a crystal mm -hmm. clear thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to say total mineral content is going to play a role, yeah, especially yeah. with with salts with sodium and chloride. So that total mineral content, I think, is going to yeah. uh, give you a residual haze. It helps well. retain haze uh, yeah. over over <coughs> long periods of time. So as there well. you go. And, and then, yeah, the the <coughs> starch that he was talking about. Uh, I think the biggest one is Malto Trio. So that a lot of those yeast just want to attack. Um, but those are those medium chain starches, the starches that some yeast can eat and some yeast can't. Basically, uh, that's going to continually giving that give you that starch haze. So you got a combination of starches, you got a combination of hop oils, and maybe some mineral content. That's all yeah. going to give you that residual haze long term. Yeah, and then. That's a reason why a lot of the British strains work beautifully for hazy New England IPAs. Hey, Esteban, uh, is it recommended to squish the hot bag? Yes. I always squeeze my sack <laughs> when I brew. That, that you should always squeeze the sack. Always squeeze the it sack. makes the get, experience get, far better. Yes. Get all those giddy goods. And don't be worried about, uh, uh, you know, tannic bitterness or any, like, extra hop bite coming out of that because if you're fermenting properly or doing everything you should post boil post fermentation then that should all settle out and not end up in your final beer yep yes <laughs> which is true um speaking of things not flocculating out the uh the yeast not flocculating out one of the reasons that i wanted to put this up there is because beers that are made to be or that are hazy because you drink them super fresh and the yeast isn't flocculated out. I always get an extra hot, I get yeast bite from that. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, so. There's definitely something in there. Green. It goes back to being a green beer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it'll fall out eventually regardless, but it might also blow your can open. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's another, somebody asked about uh, having problems with uh, hop creep somewhere in here. And you know, that is a real thing, uh, especially with hazy IPAs recently. I mean, we've known about hop creep for a long time, but all of these late end and dry hop beers coming out, this is a real thing that's coming back in the prevalence of people having far too overcarbonated beer, uh, over pressurized cans, as well as sticks of butter, basically, in their beer. Yeah, uh, my favorite flavor, as I said before, yeah. in yeah. my hazy IPA. I can't uh, believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> hey, I mean, you could probably use it for a stew and be really delicious. Uh, yeah, there's always, yeah, no, yeah, there's always something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, no, a hazy IPA, no, that's stew, the word. That yeah. sound. If your beer is a cooking beer, it's probably <laughs> dumpable. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> dumpable. Um, but uh, that's a real thing, and um, it hot, could help with hot burn, too, is actually letting these beers ferment out all the way, taking that into account of like, oh shoot, I just threw hops in it, maybe I need to let it sit for a minute for those to uh, fully settle out and finish. One thing people don't necessarily talk about is these, is these yeast strains that we use for these uh, hazy IPAs, they do work, in my uh, experience, a little bit slower than yeah. like a Chico, a you yeah. know, USO5 or an American Ale. Well, except so, when you use Voss. Well, yeah. The, okay, yeah, the boss is a totally different beast. You know, that's like a done in three days, and you're like, holy shit, where did this come from? But uh, yeah, it, uh, definitely let it sit for an extra day or two. Uh, people are, are always talking about, oh, you got to drink them like, you know, you brew it on day one, and you're, you got to package it on day three. It's like, well, no, let it, let it become a beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let it do its natural processes. Uh, the Villa question, Villa Vander. Recommended dry hop time so as not to get that grassy taste in the mouth. Uh, don't eat grass. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't dry hop with grass. Yeah, yes. That would be well, yeah, let's warm, yeah. But uh, in all seriousness for that, uh, depending on what hop product you're using on there, the time is variable, but we never recommend going over five days on hop material. Yeah, we, we usually say three days is a pretty safe combination. As long as you've got a good way to get full contact, like we kind of mentioned before, you want to make sure that those hops have time to actually be soaked into your beer. Um, and so if they're still floating on the top, you probably didn't get that full contact. But uh, yeah, th uh, three days is kind of, uh, I think, a pretty safe zone as long as you're good at doing that. Yeah, uh, and what I'd say on hop product, if you're using cryo hops or lupo max or lupulin pellets, you can push that a little bit further because there's a lot <laughs> less plant material in it. Um, yeah. Here's a question for you guys. Have you guys played around with uh, terpenes at all or any sort of uh, extracts or oils or things like that? None of the extracts, yeah, we do a little bit of, of cryo, but yeah, yeah, you did. It's about the most exciting hot product we've we've used. We brought in some terpenes, and then we we did a, a series of beers that basically was one base beer, and then we just uh, 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 I did different isolates in the kegs. We had like oh, a myrcene cool. isolate, yeah, and then a so uh, cool. beta yeah. pinene isolate, and whatever. That's fun. Um, so, uh, but we we enjoyed them. They they turned out really well. That's yeah. fun, and, and brewing should not be fun. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking up. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, you know, That's, this goes yeah. back to the hazy IPA. It's like, how do you make a hazy IPA? Well, if you ask 10 brewers how to make a hazy IPA, you're going to get 12 different answers. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no one right way to do it. Uh, just take, take, take little things and, and, and put them all together, and hopefully the beer turns out hazy. Yeah. Uh, it stays we, hazy. That's the important yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Would Kieselsal and Kaidasan work to clarify the beer if I add it on bottling day? Uh, so Kieselsal and Kaidasan would, would grab onto each other <laughs> if you added them on the same day. You want to add your Kiesel Sol a couple days before you add your Kytosan. Um That said, if you were to add your Kiesel Sol and then a couple days later add your Kytosan and then add that during bottling day, you run the risk of probably not having your bottles condition, I'm guessing. If, yeah. you, if you clarified going into the, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd recommend that because you want your yeast to be up and active and not, not settling down. Well, then if you added it then and he, if the yeast still didn't drop out, then it's still hazy because the Kaidosan and Kisosol didn't do anything. Yeah. So I think adding, <clears throat> I don't know. I think Honestly, that one's a lost ledger. I do, it, I do it in the kegs, but I, I just, th as I was talking, I thought about the fact that you gotta, you know, physically condition a bottle. Yeah. I mean, if you, you had a pre-carbonated bottle, or pre-carbonated beer, and you were bottling it up, that could maybe work. But again, adding the both positive and negative ion at the same time will make them latch on to each other and not clarify anything out. Then they're not going to work. Yeah. So, uh, don't do that. Alright, so we're maybe. past most of our, uh, our, our topics <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. You guys want to throw out some Q&A? We got maybe about 10 more minutes before we got to shut this thing down. So if Ooh. you guys got questions for us or for uh, the Yaya -Ya guys, then throw them out there. Ke Kevin uh, Raby that said... Uh, Hazy IPA and carnitas is delicious, and mm. I would probably absolutely believe that. As long as you're adding it in on like that tail end, so it's not boiling and becoming bitter, mm, that mm. could be really good. Yeah. 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 How many pounds of strawberries do I need for a five gallon batch to really bring out the flavor? Yeah, that one. You guys brew the fruit over? I mean, for your sours, probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Five gallons, not much. <laughs> well, strawberries pretty weak. They're used to thinking in the, uh, yeah, what, yeah. 150 to 180 gallons? Yeah, three, 350 to 400. 350 to 400 <laughs> gallons. Uh, you're on a, what, 10, 10 barrel, 15 barrel? 10, 10, 10 I, can do, I can do 12 barrels. Yeah, so. okay. Mm. Uh, um, I would say for strawberry specifically, first recommendation, I like to use frozen fruit because it explodes the cell walls and you get all the goodies that are inside the cell walls. Do you, um, do you defrost it first or do you put it in frozen? I usually, uh, personally, I like to fr uh, get frozen fruit and then I pasteurize it. So I'll bring it up mm -hmm. to like a, because if I get any extra boiling on it, sometimes that caramelizes the sugars a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, not necessary, you can throw it in frozen and it'll, it'll, it'll thaw it eventually and it's, it yep. should theoretically be sanitary when it comes to you. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say probably three pounds, five pounds if you want a really strawberry e-beer. Uh, depending on the beer, uh, three to five on that. I mean, if you're making a uh, strawberry blonde called She Wolf, then you definitely are probably on like the three pound side. If you're making, you know, a big, like oh, a okay. straw, no, no, <laughs> that's a beer fest reference. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> 
If you've watched the movie Beer Fest, the, you know, somebody steals their recipe for the perfect beer, and it ends up being a light strawberry-flavored beer. Oh. They call it She-Wolf. Good reference. It's okay. That's, um, that's going back into, yeah. the, into yeah. the vault there. Yeah, yeah that's way so, anyway, I, have, I have that DVD. It, it, I used it I did, <laughs> entirely for the opening scene on repeat when I was like 12. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but... Uh, if you're using a stronger flavored beer, I mean, if you're making something like, say, a Saison or a Stout with strawberries, you're going to need more onto that five pound range. Uh, and it's uh, strawberries are weak. Uh, they're as a flavor. They're a very soft flavor. So do keep that in mind as well. Uh, oh, we had one. Uh, can you use a pool filter canister or a hop randall type of thing as an inline way to uh, add hops? from kettle to fermenter or fermenter to cake. Um, kettle to fermenter, that should be easy to do as long as it's plastic that's temperature graded, I think. Or you chilled it first. Yeah, one of those two things. Um, or, but from uh, fermenter to keg, you wanna make sure that you're really, really good at getting all the oxygen out of there. So um, you're kinda into, some, into some, some dicey technical waters of rigging that up to, to purge all the, all the oxygen out. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is a big no-no. With these types of beers, that's that's where you get the brown, the brown uh, hazies from. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a, a banana that you let sit out for a couple of days. Uh, I would also say be careful of uh, doing that with how much hop material and stuff like that you still have left in beers and your micron rating of your filter because you could clog it really easily and then you got to open up your beer to unclog it and drink it immediately. Have you considered using Quike for a quicker conditioning barley wine? Um, we've tried it already on accident, trying to aim for a 26% alcohol beer, whoops, um, and it's still not conditioned. It's not even finished fermenting three, yeah. one month later. Uh, I would say, uh, okay, so the quake that we found that could tolerate that was Hornidol. Hornidols. Uh, mm. And I, when we put it into the proper one, it ripped a 13%, I think, in like three or four days. It was amazing. Uh, if we hadn't quite got it to the conditions there that it was at. I think that uh, Hornadol would definitely make a beautiful barley wine. Uh, you would also have to condition it a while. It was super, super fusely uh, coming out. And, you know, I know quite generally isn't known for creating those fusely off flavors, but with how high alcohol it was and how quickly and hotly it was produced, it need some time to condition before being served are you gonna have a 10-day barley wine on tap yeah probably will it taste great probably not <laughs> but it'll get you hammered oh yeah yeah, yeah. and that's the point that's yeah, yeah that's, that's the the, it's good to have goals in brewing and that's that's one of them yeah <laughs> not have fun and get fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh do, 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 opening do, do, a small scale brewery but uh want to brew small scale uh do you think a b180 pro and four unit tanks would suffice I'm not sure what the B180 Pro is, so I can't answer that. But uh, the one thing that I'll say about if you're brewing on the small scale is you can expect to brew a lot if you're doing well and still not make a lot of money. <coughs> so it's something to definitely be, uh, be wary of. If you're the one that wants to own and operate and you're, you're just doing your tap room on a small scale in a busy neighborhood or something like that, I think it can work, but you will be the, the everything person there. Always, always uh, go 25 to 50% bigger than what you think you're going to need. Yeah, it's a good good rule in, of thumb. In general. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy said that the uh, barley wine we drank a little while ago uh, that was 14 and a half was SB. Oh, nice. Yeah, that that's really cool. That's going to be the new thing, quite, uh, quite, quite barley, barley wines. wines. Mm -hmm. are you, yeah, are you kidding me? Especially for professional brewers. You can have a 12% <laughs> yeah. barley wine out of the tank in yeah. like 10 Do days. It. Yes. I will sit on cakes. <laughs> 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 like, it's not going to go anywhere. Right? <laughs> Um, uh, someone the, did it with Lutra and it worked out. Uh, ask Corbs in a five gallon batch. Um, Three to five a, grams, somebody already answered it. Five grams, it. yeah, okay, good. Uh, on the, I've seen it a couple of times on there, so. Uh, that is right at, where was another one? It's uh, do, 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 do. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Hop, uh, hop profiles being different uh, between hazies that are lighter and darker. Um, if you're using a little bit more sweeter malts uh, versus less sweet. I mean, if you make a Heidelberg hazy versus maybe a Golden Promise hazy. Yeah. What do you guys do? Yeah. 
As far as color goes, I mean, I try to get somewhere in that yellow to orange range, well, it, not the light. Do you change their? Do, would but you change, change your hot profile, profile differently for? Uh, well, it depends on if I'm doing like a hazy pale or a hazy IPA or a hazy double IPA or something. Yeah. But I'm not going to change it just just for the color. It wouldn't really yeah. change the color. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, the hops, I don't know. I mean, I don't think they really have an effect on color. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, they wouldn't have an effect on color. I don't know if I would uh, if I were to make a more orange versus <laughs> a like a 100% Heidelberg crystal clear, just for the like the psychological perspective of the hot profile that I want based on the color of beer, I feel like I might change it, but I think my, my, my answer would probably be I wouldn't change it much just because if I have a hot profile that I'm going for, I'm probably working backwards on the malt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say the, yeah. The big thing on that is you're probably on hazies, you're probably starting with a hot profile first and then working on your malts and match it. Um, so maybe if you're using more pungent malts, or sorry, more pungent hops, you're using maybe a sweeter base malt to kind of counteract that. But as far as it, it, Jimmy uh, asked this question on there, as far as like matching malts and hops together, it, for hazies, I would say probably most everybody starts with their hops and what flavor they're going to first and then just kind of throws malts at it, um, you know. Like 100% yeah. Halcyon. Like 100% Halcyon. <laughs> well, you, uh, that's a juicy. I mean, a, a hazy is, I think Chris said it earlier, a hazy is like the epitome of uh, some of its all part, uh, some of its parts. Mm -hmm. uh, every ingredient is important all the way to the water profile. So it's yeah. in that everything, every, everything has a point. <laughs> uh, we should have a second bottle there if your guest wants to try it and the stout may still be there too. Uh, I think it is. But we're, oh. running, we're running out of time, so probably, yeah. probably not today. All right. Once uh, you try it after the live stream. That given work. that dry hop uh, additions raise the final pH, um, the beer pH, and Hazy G has a lot of them, do you have any recommendations on how to achieve a good final beer pH in Hazy's? Um, I feel like that pH elevation is usually wanted. It's usually well, something that softens the, the beer. I've, yeah. I've heard this a little yeah. bit, though, in that uh, people who are big IPA drinkers before Hazy's became a thing don't like Hazy's because it gives them a lot of heartburn. Um, and mm. that's actually one of, if you guys, if people didn't know out there, the massive amount of hops definitely uh, can attribute to that because, you know, they're acids. The opposite, no, they're bases. They, mm. they raise the pH. No, they raise the pH, but, you know, it's an but they've got they've got a lot of they've, acid. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff in there, so that could be part of it. Uh, they're not... <clears throat> Yeah, okay. I, I'll, I'll chime in real quick and just say it's really not a consideration. Paul. Yeah, I don't think, and, yeah, for me it's not either. It's not something that I really care about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think the pH is like a little bit higher pH is something that I think I, I usually go for. Uh, or I think it's it's welcoming the beer. It's something that naturally comes from the making the beer how it's supposed to be made. And people usually like the way it tastes because uh, it's how it's supposed to taste. <clears throat> uh, all right, let's do one more question real quick. Have you guys played around with brute beers any more recently? I made a brute IPA because it finished uh, at 1024, and then you enzymed it down to 1002. Um, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's a question other than have we played around with more brutes, but we've done uh, we did a handful of brutes for about a year. We were, we're doing them every other day, and we still brute for locale IPAs. So something that will start at 1035 and then finish out at one, just for a you know 4.2 95 calorie beer. Um, so that's the, pretty much the only time that we've brooded other than for like a, like a barley wine that we need to get down below 1030 or 1035 or something like that. Mm -hmm. You guys brute? We never did a brute. It kind of came and went and, uh, yeah, it was a quick fad. Yeah. It, yeah. Kind of, I'm kind of sad about that. Yeah, they were good. Like, there yeah, were yeah. some really, really good brutes and the flavors were amazing in there. But What's the point? Did a really good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, did you guys, you guys did one too, right? Yeah. We did a handful. We were doing them for like yeah. a year. I remember. Okay. I think that was the yeah. first brute IPA I had was here actually. Yeah. Uh, like uh, yeah. And then year, for that, after ago. that, we just did it for locales basically. Like lots mm -hmm. of, lots of locales. Mm -hmm. All right. Tim, do the close out. I'm going to get this thing shut down. All right. So, uh, on Blanc. Uh, Subscribe to Yaya. Follow them on Instagram and, and, uh, and OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean, really, really just, just the only Insta only yeah. only fans. We do have so, a social media, though. At it's fun. At Yaya Bruco. Yeah. Subscribe to them. Go to their social media. We don't do cool website. shit like this, though. No. You know. You're just going to get pictures of cans and beer. Yeah. Uh, and the occasional. It, occasionally, like a hand. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. They're sexy cans. They, they look, they're, they they're look sexy. They're good sexy cans. Uh, but, 
uh, you know, nothing. Yeah. No, no live streams. That's all right. You you know you you make up for it with delicious beer on show, so oh, that's all right. You're too. You know how to make oh, a girl so feel special. Sweet, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna make him blush here pretty soon. <laughs> uh, subscribe to ours. Like all of our stuff. Like all of their stuff. You know we're Genus. Genus not brewing. That's Yaya Brewing Co. We loved having you on here today, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. This was fun. This is awesome. It was good. Some delicious beers. And uh, Jake, drink, uh, bring us more stout. That, that was awesome. <laughs> that was really, really good. Like, and if you definitely. want to listen to us in your car sometimes, this will also be on podcasting, wherever podcasting is podcasted. <laughs> Let's also listen to our podcast because they're also podcasts, and you can listen to them anytime and anywhere podcast even in the shower oh yes that is the best time to listen to them thank you